mountain you will find coming out to me. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you speak to our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor Mildred. Thank you so very much. I love you and your husband so dearly. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to charge our hearts for a few minutes, wherever we stop for tonight. But like Pastor already charged us before I came up, I'd like you to be very intentional. Oftentimes, people come to the house of God, they enjoy the atmosphere, but it seems like there is a spirit that distracts people the moment the word comes. They become unnecessarily careless. And the word that should liberate them would come. But then like Jacob in chapter 28, they are not sensitive enough. He says, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. The result of that carelessness and negligence was 20 years of pain in the house of Laban. By the time we get to Genesis 32, God comes to him again. This time from his pain he had learned. The Bible says he dismissed his wife, his cattle, when he was alone. Then a man came and he held on to him. He said, leave me for the day, break it. He says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He blessed him. He touched the whole of his thigh. And the Bible says, the sun arose and he called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. May tonight be someone's night of encounter. In the name of Jesus. The path to spiritual progress. The path to spiritual progress. I want to charge our hearts tonight. The path to spiritual progress. The Bible declares that the path of the just, one who is in Christ, should be as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. And everybody desires to make progress, to advance, to flourish, like God has spoken to you through His servant. But then, your spiritual progress in order of priority is the most important factor that governs every other aspect of progress. Now, it is possible to excel in some areas, neglecting your spiritual life. We have seen people become wealthy, millionaires and billionaires, and they have no respect and no regard for spiritual things. But it is impossible to thrive and to become holistically advanced, ignoring your spiritual life. The control room, please listen, for the believer's progress is the health and the strength of your spiritual life. Hallelujah. And in the days that come upon us now, we cannot afford to be careless as far as our spiritual lives are concerned. Now, I know that there are other aspects we need to grow and thrive in financially, in our homes, family life, health, and so on and so forth. But hear me again that in order of priority, if your spiritual life goes down, it is only a matter of time. Every other aspect of your life will begin to answer. Is that true? You do not destroy a tree by plucking the leaves one by one. All you need to do is to disconnect it from the root and to leave it lying there. And the leaves that still look green as at the point of disconnection will eventually become dry. But you remove all of the leaves, as laborious as that is, you only wasted your time if you left that tree connected to the root. Because it will come out with a level of, of, of glory again that superseded what you were trying to cut down. Many believers have not learned the excellency of making spiritual progress. And I think we live in a world that has downplayed spiritual things. We largely perceive spiritual things to be a nuisance and an interruption to civilization or our sense of general progress. So it's as though we have been left with an option 
to become spiritual and then mediocre in every aspect of life or to just nicely reject God or downplay Him, then excel in any other area. The Bible teaches us, we read from Genesis to Revelation, how that men ignored God and they seem to have a semblance of success. But overnight, for many of them, overnight, Hallelujah. Things went down and they got back to ashes. They got back to nothing. And the Bible also tells us people who seem to have paid attention investing in their spiritual lives. And for a long time they look like failures based on the indices that we use to measure success. And as though overnight, men like Joseph, you would call Joseph a failure. Imagine if you met Joseph the night to his lifting. He would still look like a failure. Except that the track record of his strength and health with God will not... I preached a message at the mainland yesterday and you do well to get the teachings and listen to it. The Bible says that God cannot be mocked. Galatians 6, 9 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. And I taught them in the mainland that whatsoever is a seed. There are soils that can receive whatsoever. Hallelujah. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. So I want to charge your heart. Um, let me tell you the truth. My, my, the, the major index for my according honor to people in order of priority, I'm someone who is very vocal about honor, but... I do not have so much honor for people who downplay the realm of the spirit and downplay the role that your spiritual stature has to play as far as your overall progress is concerned. And we need to be careful because the pride that is upon mankind is about to be tamed by the realities that will happen in the world right now. There are many people like Nebuchadnezzar and like all the kings in Babylon who believe that because of the abundance of what they had that they could do without God. In a moment, they were all brought to their knees. That's the reason why we raise that song that our eyes are fixed on Him, that we're looking unto Him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, and lean not on your own understanding. Then it says, in all your ways acknowledge. To acknowledge means to be able to place priority on. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Show me someone who looks like a failure. All I want to check first is his spiritual state. If that man is still making robust spiritual investments, then you better change your statement fast because you will have to say sorry in the future. But show me a man who has ignored God and is having a semblance of success. I show you a risk about this is a self destructive risk. It is only a fool that will say in his heart, there is no God. The Bible says, in him we live. Is that in your Bible? In him we breathe. And in him we have our being. Society seems to not place so much value on you when you become vocal about the things of God. Because they just brand you as being... I'm not talking about blind fanatism. There is, there is a wrong approach to the Christian faith that is just blind fanatism with no results. That makes you a nuisance to yourself and to everybody around you. This is not what I'm advocating. I'm advocating a level of passion that is palpable with results that show. Are we together now? It's important we understand what I'm advocating tonight. There are people who, out of their zeal without knowledge, blindly advocating spiritual things, have become a nuisance to the body of Christ, to themselves, because they have captured a context of Christianity that does not represent the Christ properly. I'm talking about a depth of relationship with God that causes his honor to be smeared upon you and a generation can attest to the fact that through your life it is profitable to love God. We look to Yahweh 
Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 4. Let's start from verse 1. The Bible says, if we can have KJV or the new, no, no problem. Now I say unto you, KJV says, that an heir, for as long as he is a child, that is a condition there, an heir, meaning a bona fide beneficiary of an inheritance. But there is a condition that that person must get out of to be able to walk in the fullness of that status of being an heir. He says, an heir, for as long as he is a child, differeth not from a slave. That means the experience of that word, if you put that person side by side, to a slave, you would not know who was the heir and who was the slave. In other words, their experiences will be the same, negatively speaking. An heir, for as long as he's a child, there should be an honor and a garment of glory that is upon an heir. Is that true? But it says, for as long as he's a child. So the problem is that state of childishness. And Paul helped us to understand his concept of childishness in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I understood like a child. So these are the dimensions that capture childishness. He says, now that I have become a man, I have laid these childish things away. When I was a child, I understood I thought I spoke as a child. But now that I have become a man, I must lay aside childish speaking, childish understanding. Is that true? And childish thoughts. The path to spiritual progress. God desires that we excel spiritually and that from the foundation of our spiritual progress, very beautiful description that Pastor Mildred was given that from the root it goes down and then it begins to spread. That's right. So, if your spiritual life is robust and alive, it then becomes that every other aspect of your life begins to respond. It may not happen immediately. I love what the pastor said when I came in. I heard him say something that was powerful that you bear fruit with patience. Hallelujah. I want to share with us a few keys that can help any believer. This is a roadmap and a spiritual pathway that God is giving us tonight that if we follow, we will eventually emerge people of stature and people of maturity in the spirit. And let me tell you the truth. The days that are upon us will demand that your stability depends literally on the extent of the spiritual stamina that you have. There are many who will fall by the wayside, not because of insincerity, not even because of lack of godliness. But the Bible says, but the people that do know they are God, they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploit. Not the people who assume there is God. Not the people who hear that there is God. Not the people who receive a sermon about God. The people who know. Hallelujah. So there are a number of forces and requirements given to the believer to help and aid our maturity. In fact, spiritual maturity in the kingdom, you may want to write, is not a mystery. Spiritual maturity in the kingdom is not a mystery. It is predicated upon your adherence to certain spiritual steps. 
That means there is predictability to spiritual maturity. It is not a mystery. You can be matured and you can know you are matured spiritually. I do not know any adult who is not, aside from cases of ill health, I don't know any adult who is still at a loss as to whether you are an adult biologically. You can be an adult and not know. That's if you are healthy and fine. Are we together now? Yes. It's only a child that does not know he's a child. It is when he becomes an adult, you will know he was a child yesterday. But an adult will always know that you are an adult. So if you are still doubting whether you are mature, it's proof that you are not. The apostle says, such as I have. It was not a statement of pride. It was derived from his knowledge. There is something I have and it came by growth. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible speaking about Jesus said, and Jesus increased. Every time I read that scripture, it inspires me. You would think because Jesus was the word incarnate, there should never be a reason for increase. And yet Jesus the word, he still grew. He increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a demand upon us to grow and that there are possibilities that we cannot step into except and unless by growth. Are we together? Many of us here, I presume, are parents. No matter how you love your son or your daughter, you cannot take a child of five, six years, even a child of ten years under normal circumstances and give them the keys to your car. No matter how they cry and beg, it is love that is responsible for that restraint. Not because you are insecure. You love them too much. Now the child will believe arrogantly that he can drive. But as the parent, you know that it will be wickedness. There are certain givings that are not proof of love. So many of the things we ask God for, our maturity cannot host it. We keep praying and say, Lord, open certain doors. Give me certain things. The restraint is not because God does not want to give. His character as a father is that he is a giver. According to Bible, the proof of fatherhood is not just having children. It's in your benevolence. If you being evil know how to give, how much more shall your heavenly father? So when you call him Abba, you also call him a giver. But... That his giving to you is not just predicated on his ability to give, nor your desire to have, but your growth and your maturity. There are certain levels of prosperity, anointings, graces, influence that cannot come to you except and unless by growth. Moses was already called to be a deliverer, but that childish spiritually speaking version of him could not be a deliverer he had to be at the back side of the mountain for 40 years and then from one encounter to another encounter when he had attained a stage of maturity god now mandated him and said you go back can i tell you there are many of you who have had visions you have had dreams you have received prophetic words you have seen from scripture that which god intends to do i am telling you that in many cases it may not just be demonic is that you have refused to grow to a state where what god gives you becomes a blessing i hope you know that immaturity can make good things become evil hallelujah so what are the principles that can help us to make maximum spiritual progress even in this prophetic year that God has spoken to you of by his servant. Number one, the first force that is responsible for progress in the kingdom, please write it, is the ministry of prayer. I won't talk much, I will just mention them and then a word or two, because I hope that we'll have some time to pray and then I speak over our lives. The ministry of prayer. I can spend all night and all week teaching on prayer because prayer is such a vast dimension as far as our work with God is concerned. Jesus had a lot to say about the ministry of prayer. We are a praying people, I confess, as a continent and as a nation. 
But I think the challenge with the African and the Nigerian church as far as prayer is concerned is many dimensions of our prayers are praying and needs. Because there is a lot of dissipation of energy but very little result that comes from our prayer. There is a lot of engagement but there is no intelligence that follows our prayer. So we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy and we feel justified that on account of that effort, that laborious effort, this was, what the, the, this was the frustration of the apostles when they were disciples. There was something about the results of Jesus. They saw him pray and they saw the results that backed his prayer life. And they had to open up and say, teach us to pray. There is, it was not an issue of prayerlessness. It was an issue of praying without results. It is, it, is, it is painful to invest in prayer and not get results. Hallelujah. But the ministry of prayer is one that you can never downplay and grow. Prayer is very important. Jesus had a lot to say about prayer. For instance, Luke 18 and verse 1. The Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. So he mandates that all men pray. Not preachers, not those in trouble, not those who think they are being afflicted. All men ought to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. That means to be consistent in your prayer life. Just giving you a few scriptures. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, when you read verse 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when, not if, when ye pray. When ye pray. It is true that prayer is not the only key of the kingdom, but prayer must be involved in every process in the kingdom. Please listen to what I just said. Prayer is not, cannot be the only key of the kingdom. But prayer must be involved in every process of the kingdom. The Bible here connects desire to prayer. Whatsoever things, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, Apostle James was mentoring us again in the school of prayer. And he said, if, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Then he says, the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Are we learning now? You are not growing spiritually for sure if there is a decline in your prayer life. I assure you on this. If you downplay prayer and prayer becomes a necessary burden that you just have to go through, you are not going to grow spiritually. There is a role that prayer has to play in the growth and the maturity of the saints. Let me just run through four of them very quickly. Still on point one. The first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation. You may want to write it down. The first assignment of prayer in your life is for your growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke 9, 29. The Bible says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. Prayer transforms you. What does that mean? When you engage yourself and submit yourself to the ministry of prayer, backed up by the Spirit, it is able to begin to open your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. The absence of discernment, spiritual carelessness is a product of prayerlessness. So many things happen, but you have not sustained the faculty to perceive, to discern. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible gives that one of the recommendations for getting out of temptation is to watch and pray. Watch means your intellect and your mind will be involved. But in addition to that, it says pray. Do not depend on your mind and your intellect alone. Watch and pray. If you watch alone, you will fall into temptation. If you pray alone, you might fall into temptation. Watch and pray. Is God speaking to us? 
So the first assignment of prayer is for your growth and transformation. The second assignment of prayer very quickly is for what I call spiritual legislation. The ability to make decrees and to manifest possibilities in your life. If you are not rich in your prayer life, there are many things that will not be captured in your experience. Because many of those things will come through the power of decrees and creation. If we are together, say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Most people do not know. In fact, Job 22 and verse 28 says, it says that thou shalt decree a thing. Job 22 and 28. 22, 28. 2, 2, 2, 8. Hallelujah. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established. What will be established is not what you want. It's what you decree. And you decree in prayer. Are we together? That in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation. That when men say there is a casting down for me, I decree and declare that there will be a lifting up. Is that someone's testimony? So this is the year when you don't keep quiet. When you hear that something is killing people, AI hey, yeah, is not the response. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I am covered. The Bible says, they that dwell in the house of the Lord, that they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Is that true? That even in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. The assignment of prayer is to give you the responsibility of working in partnership with the Spirit to design and create your possibilities. Do not complain about a day that you did not speak into. Listen, listen. Don't assume you understood what I just said. Do not complain. You have a responsibility. The Bible says... This is the day that the Lord has made. Is that true? He makes the day, but you now fill that day with the possibilities that you want, and that happens through prayer. It says, Has thou commanded thy money? Many people are careless, they stumble into days, they stumble into seasons, and they wonder why negative things are there. When you fail to sow a seed in your farm, something will still grow. It is called weed. Agriculture defines weeds as unwanted plants. They are plants, but they are not wanted, at least not in the farm. And I will not be silent. I will always as long as. I am breathing. I will prayer gives you the responsibility to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. January, you are blessed. February, you are blessed. I call you by your name. I'm speaking about myself. Don't say amen for me. March, I declare you are blessed. April, May, June, July. In the name of Jesus, all that I see in my life is the glory of God. I reject everything that does not carry the image of God in my life. Listen, let me tell you the truth. As childlike as this sounds, many people today have fallen sadly even to the grave. Because they did not know that part of the responsibility of the believer is to use the creative power of God given to you through words and through the medium of prayer in partnership with the Spirit. Did you know in Ezekiel 37, he said, Ezekiel, tell the bones to do this. And the bones did not respond to the voice of the Spirit. The bones had what the Holy Spirit was telling Ezekiel, yet they did not respond until Ezekiel spoke. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a sound. The sound started when the man spoke, not when the Spirit spoke. So God can say it is a great year for you. If you do not speak, that statement remains in the realm of the Spirit. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
not just hear so, not just wish so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let those who are flourishing by the Lord say so. Those who are ashamed to say so are those who will be in trouble. The woman said to herself, if I may but touch. I can heal myself, but I can speak. I may have an issue of blood, but not an issue of speaking. Hallelujah. The third assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession. This is very powerful. I'm not teaching on prayer, but I'm just helping you. I hope we're still together. Yes. That we're discussing the forces that help us to make spiritual progress. And one of them is prayer. And I'm now breaking down that prayer has four assignments, biblically speaking. One of the assignment of prayer is for your group and transformation. Number two is for spiritual legislation. Number three is for warfare and intercession. Let me tell you the truth. I hate, I wish that I were lying, but demons are real. Look up please. Wickedness is real. The Bible tells us without confusion that the whole world lies in wickedness. I didn't trouble anybody. Nobody would trouble me. Go to heaven. For as long as you are on earth, the Bible tells, please look up, look up, look up. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just telling you that the world is that wicked to the point that your progress will become somebody's reason for hatred. Why are you moving forward? Why does everything work out for you? There were people who bound themselves in the Bible with fasting that they would not eat till Paul died. I don't know what they did because Paul lived long after that time. Whether they broke their fast, they forgave themselves, but Paul did not die immediately. But look at that level of wickedness that people will bind themselves and say, food, go away. On That means someone can sit down and say, I don't know who owns this company, but for as long as I'm alive, I will work in partnership with the devil to see that it's only tears that come. This is the assignment of prayer, that you can redesign and redirect your possibilities and say, Satan minus me, minus your children, you decree and declare. Hallelujah. It is true. Spiritual legislation and then warfare and intercession. You can establish spiritual realities in your life. No sickness will come and bring me down to the grave. No. I, I have a long life to live serving the purposes of God. Lord, you spoke to me through my pastor that I'm flourishing. Therefore, they say that this thing affects everybody in our family. But I make a decree in the name of Jesus that there is a superior blood, the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things even than the blood of Abel. And I appropriate that blood over my life and my health. I will not be a victim of these demonic patterns. Let me submit to you. Hope Hoping and wishing that one day it will magically get out of your life is a joke. You will need to pray. There are families where people don't rise. It is true. You've seen everybody, you've seen those who went before you tried to rise and they went down. Don't take for granted. These forces are vicious, they show no mercy. It takes the ability to engage the forces of the spirit, especially the forces of the blood, to keep the enemy at bay. God did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is a structured demonic organogram. Paul, in his exegesis, began to lift the cadres. He says, for we do not... Uh, wrestle against flesh and blood. Is that in your Bible? But against what? Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and the spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies. He now begins to teach you that Jesus himself is head over principalities. He recognizes their existence. You are the only one who has denied it. Jesus himself recognizes that they are there, but that you are being raised up with him above them. It is your assignment to now engage and establish that reality. Please, for someone this year, God is saying, if you keep quiet, this year will be like last year. It's time to pray and say no more. 2023, I engage, I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, my business must reveal Christ. My life must reveal Christ. 
Apostle, don't talk to me about last year. It was a horrible year. Don't worry. Remember you not the former things. Nor consider the things of old. But it is your assignment now. Every year will be like the last. Except your prayer changes it. Is someone learning? Hmm. Let me stop here so we go to the next one. That should be enough. The day that we discuss prayer proper will now stretch all the dimensions. I think you've had enough on prayer. Hallelujah. That the assignment of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do I give you the last one? Okay, so prayer is a platform for obtaining requests and granting petitions. Petitions and requests are granted through the medium of prayer. If you do not pray, there is no basis for obtaining requests. What things soever ye desire, Mark eleven twenty four. it says, when ye pray. So it is at the place of prayer we receive. Notice here, he uses two words, receive and have. You only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual thing. Having is the manifestation. We only have what we have received by faith. Are we together now? What things soever ye desire. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a great year. I'm trusting God to lift my children. You can receive answers in the place of prayer. Someone say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. One more time. Say I obtain grace to pray. You must fight prayerlessness. Like you fight Satan. You must obtain grace to wake up and pray. Wake up and pray. Wake up and pray. Pray as a couple. Pray as a business. Don't say we are not into this spiritual thing. Better be spiritual. Pray. Hallelujah. Wake up and pray. Because God is in the business of rewarding and lifting people. And Satan is determined like never before to bring others down. You can exempt yourself through prayer. Shout Amen, please. The second force that is responsible for spiritual progress in this kingdom is the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word. Number one was the ministry of prayer. The ministry of the word. Acts chapter 20, please. And verse 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. Acts 20 32. And now, brethren, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. I'm hearing God is speaking about someone and he's saying he's averting death from the family. This is, this, yes, of course, I know everybody, but as I just mentioned that scripture, I just saw a coffin and I had it in my spirit. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But anything that has vowed that your family, maybe your loved ones, maybe someone is sick in the hospital, in the name of Jesus here at this conference, I stand in partnership with the graces that are in this house. And I declare that you are escaped from death. Your loved ones are escaped from death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The sound of mourning will not be heard in your house. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace. Watch the assignment of the word. Number one, it is able to build you up. Number two, it is able to give you an inheritance among them. Not among everyone. Among them that are sanctified. I commend you to God. I commend you to the word. It is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. This is very, very powerful. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Second Timothy 3, 15. Second Timothy 3, 15. Timothy. Second Timothy 3, 15. Very powerful scripture. And that from a child 
So when did you start that word project? From a child. Thou hast known the Holy Scripture. He says, which are able to make you wise. We don't just become wise. We are made wise by the word. When you say someone is wise, I'm not talking about Sophia, the world's wisdom. Superior wisdom that comes from above. We don't just have it. We are given by the word. When you interact with the word, you access supernatural divine wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom is connected to mighty works. In fact, it says wisdom is justified by her children. The presence of wisdom is validated by the results that follow. Don't say I am wise if your life is barren of results. Are we together? It can make you wise unto salvation. It can make you wise. The Bible contains the wisest perspective. God's thoughts, his modus operandi, as far as any and all matters that pertain to life and godliness is concerned. When you ignore the word of God, you may have heard me teach it, but let me just say it here, that essentially the Bible contains three things. Number one, promises. You may want to write. Number two, principles. You may also want to write that. Number three, prophecies. So every time you open the Bible, you are interacting with three dimensions of reality. Number one, promises. God's commitment to you. Number two, principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, how God operates. Number three, prophecies, a compass that guides you into a meaningful life in the midst of all that happens in society. We are not surprised today because the Bible is a prophetic book. It already told us darkness shall cover the earth. Any believer that is grounded in the world should not be surprised. Being shocked and surprised is proof that you have not accessed the wisdom that comes with the word. Did the Bible not say perilous times shall come? Did the Bible not say nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom? Those are not principles. That is the prophetic operation of the word. But you can find the promises. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, for instance, it says, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that these blessings, all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. It says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Promises. There are conditions tied to them. Then there are principles. The Bible tells us through parables that the kingdom operates this way. And it will use a story to illustrate a biblical principle. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increases. There is he that withholdeth. It's not a promise. That is a principle. When you reject the word of God, you have rejected access to superior wisdom. When you reject the word of God, you have rejected access to superior wisdom. And the Bible speaking about wisdom, it says, By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. It said, With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness, that those that seek me early will find me. There is timing to wisdom. You must seek it early. Is someone learning now? This is the year that you must obtain grace. Go and get pastor's materials and settle down. Don't say I was there when they preached it. Faith comes by two kinds of hearing. The hearing that gives you information and the hearing that gives you understanding. It comes by hearing and hearing. Awareness and comprehension. Just because you are aware that that subject matter was discussed does not mean you have received it. Is someone learning now? Yes. You know, most believers are careless about the word and they do not know. Please look at me. Ah. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter. Please do not allow the devil to deceive you. That the word of God is a, is, is a necessary luggage that you have to carry. Contained here are stories of people who have gotten what you are looking for. 
Is it prosperity? You will find it here. Is it the lifting power? The Bible here, written here was a shepherd who became a king. Written here was a prisoner who became a prime minister. How high do you want to rise that the word of God does not have something to tell you? Written here are dead people who came back to life. The Bible at times their testimonies in the book of Hebrews 11. It says, For by faith the elders obtained a good report. Then you begin to read, To faith, this happened, this one happened. It says, The things that are written are for time, they are for our learning, so that we, through patience and the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. Apostle, right now my health is failing. Go and read the book of Job. And I will show you a man health failed and it was a global news. And yet he still came back. Apostle, you don't know how much I've lost. Still read the book of Job and see a man who was the richest in the east and everything plus his children died. But I love chapter 42 and verse 10 of Job. It says, and God restored Job when he prayed for his friends that he had twice the things that he lost. Everyone who rejected him suddenly started coming. And the Bible says everyone brought in a piece of money. Apostle, people misunderstand me in my office. Go and ask Joseph and his trouble with Potiphar's wife. Good people can go to prison too. But they only go to prison to end up in the throne. The prison is where good and bad people meet together. Just like the cross. But I can tell you, sincere people don't remain in the prison. The same way sincere people do not hang there and remain there. For as long as you think the Bible is such a dull book that does not have anything to tell you in our contemporary world, you have fallen into the trap of Satan. How about people who became so wealthy and forgot God and misused the money? Go to the book of Ecclesiastes and watch the repentance of a fallen man. One who had everything you can ever imagine. The preacher wrote confessing that everything my eyes desired I had. Do you know what level of loss that is? That you don't have anything your eyes saw, you carried. And instead of reading many books, there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul. Hear the conclusion of the matter. Hear God, he says, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Show me the level of wisdom you have by the depth of the word that you have put in your spirit. Don't show me by your age. That's a risk. Don't show me by where you travel to or didn't travel to. That is a risk. I only call you wise to the degree to which I see the word of God resident within you. The wisdom that comes with age is profitable but very limited in the light of current realities. The wisdom that comes through academics is very useful but you have seen experts to their needs. The things that are happening in the world today have caused people to rethink their concept of intelligence. But there is wisdom that comes from above. And that comes by the word. For someone God is telling you, don't allow the devil keep deceiving you. You may not have a job, but you have a Bible. Start there. Use the time and start there. Father, open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of your word. And you will find where it was written concerning you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus came and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him. And he found where it was written concerning him. There is something written concerning you, but you must find it. When he found it, he said, this day is this fulfilled in your eyes. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be serious with the word. Five minutes, one verse, that may be for a baby Christian, but the challenges that, that are looking for you, they require a plethora of scriptural wisdom to deal with. You cannot afford to freelance your Bible study life. You just pick one verse and say, can you send me any verse to comfort me now? You need to be serious. You need to obtain grace. I'm, 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 it's my charge with every sense. Of, I'm, I'm not the reading type. I don't really like the Bible like that. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, 
when a patient is sick and they tell him swallow this one three three hours or six six hours whether you like it or not the doctor is not there to see all your tantrums you have to make up your mind it's either i want to be well is that true he says they are life to those who find them they are not just good news they are life when the bible says something he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my saying he says do not let it depart from your mouth keep it in the midst of your heart then he says they are life not to everybody to those who find them and health to their flesh your security is based on your knowledge Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Fear and loving God today and doubting unnecessarily tomorrow is because the word is not settled in you. I tell you, if you make this year the year that you sit with the word, some of you need to go and look for a bookstore, buy a Bible, buy a material or whatever, whether electronically or what. Just settle down and say, Father, I, I obtain grace, spirit of the living God. Breathe upon my mind. I'm tired of swinging like a pendulum from pillar to post. Based on the things that happen around me, I contend for stability. And that's by the word. Jesus himself knew what to do. May you know what to do this year. Please shout amen again. Don't be the kind of person that celebrates a message on Sunday. Preach, preach, and you are not listening. By Monday, you don't even know what to do. When you stand before situations and circumstances, scriptures like arrows should come out of you. And they are like weapons. You know what to do. When someone says, over my dead body for you to rise in this office, you don't have to argue and start shouting. You know what to do. There is a mystery. You surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. You know what to do. It's like calling your pastor a woman and he begins to cry. Is that not an issue of a disturbing issue? There is a depth of revelation that has translated to trust that settles within you that you know I'm a man, not a woman. So if someone says, I think you're a woman, that's, 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 then God bless your, your perception. And I pray there will be enough doctors who help you when it becomes... But as for you, you are settled. That's the same way when someone says you're a failure. You don't just speak humbly. No, no, I'm not a... I already know. There is a speaking that is out of here. But there is a settled reality. This is not pride. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. He was not lying. Are we learning? The ministry of the word. Please, if you, if you don't get anything among the things that I share today, leave this place with a renewed passion to stay with the word. Make it a project. It takes discipline. Concentration is not a gift. You have to settle down and make up your mind. Sleep, hold on, I'm studying. You will enjoy me when I sort some things in my life. But for now, you need to stay. Don't join people who, the Bible says on the seventh day God rested. You are resting on the second day. We only rest on the second, on the seventh day. Many people are resting on the first day. Resting on the second day. A CEO that has labored for years is now resting. You who just graduated, you are also resting. No, sir. Let's learn from scripture. We rest on the seventh day. You're just starting ministry, no influence, nobody knows you. We are not even sure whether you are saved or not, and you are resting. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. He says, For the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? The Bible says, A diligent hand shall be made fat. You find that in scripture, then you go and apply it. Seven o'clock, you get up and you open your business. Say, what are you doing? I'm just starting. It takes diligence to establish credibility. Someone can be sleeping and people will call him because of a relationship that has been built for 10 years. You are just starting. Don't lie down and expect somebody to call you. I hope we are still together. Please obtain grace to stay with the word. 
obtain grace. This running from pillar to post minimize it this year and settle down. Let's come and knock the door of your house and say, look, I'm studying. Not because I have a sermon to preach, because I have a destiny to fulfill. There is a mandate upon my life and I will not fail. Lord, open my eyes. Shabakatosiata. And you are studying. And light from heaven enters you. And like someone who is drunk, you begin to rejoice. It says, I found your word and I did eat it. And it was a joy and a rejoicing to me. I sense in my spirit that David's Christian Center will record phenomenal testimonies this year. That, listen, there, there are supposedly, for want of word, ordinary people, pastor, who after this conference may be sitting quietly, but by March, when they come to stand here, they say, my life is a testimony that the word produces. Listen, Carry beans or maize seed and keep it on top of your table. It does not grow. Because although it is seed, there is something you must do with it. Are we together now? Many people have gotten precious seeds, wonderful seeds, but we are not engaging it. The ministry of the word. Number three, so that we'll wrap up. I believe someone's spirit is being fired up this night. And let me just say this. Beware of people who don't even know they are being used by the devil. Who wait just where you have made a commitment to be spiritual. Here they come. In the name of friendship and brotherly kindness, they come and deflate your fire. They may not be bad people. Listen, listen. They may not be bad people, but if you are carrying Isaac to the place of sacrifice, there are good people you have to say, wait at the base here. This height we are climbing, I have to go alone. Being alone and being lonely are two different things. You must sustain the courage to move the direction of your destiny, even if it means editing people. Because there are many people who just when they make commitments for God, somebody just comes and says, you know what, uh, you are studying, can't you shift it? I think there's something, there's one movie. With it. It's a movie, you can watch it again. I don't know about you, but this is a secret to this life you are seeing. The word of God took me literally. Anybody who ignores the word, you are trying to turn God into a magician. Be ready for surprises. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Obtain grace to engage. Listen, especially over the areas that are not working in your life. Take inventory of the areas that are working and thank God for it. Then gain greater knowledge. But sample the areas that are not working. I'm healthy, I'm doing well, I'm enjoying a nice relationship with my wife and children, but this finance thing, now it's time to take it as a project. And settle down. The Bible says through wisdom, Proverbs 18 and verse 1, a man having separated himself, that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Lord, why am I like this? Why is it I, that I am a sincere person but I never have good people come around me? There is something you don't know about relationships. Go to the word. It says, he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. There may be something you are not doing. You have not seen the value of men and the value in men. Oh, this is the mistake I've been making. I've been destroying good relationships sincerely because I do not know that relationships are investments. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Go and listen to Pastor Mildred's teaching that she did this, this, and that. And you now listen. In two weeks, you have become a new version of you. By March, God would have brought strategic people to your life. And people wonder and say, what did you do that this person just gave you a car? You didn't do anything. Is that true? Is it true that you didn't do anything? You heard me say favor is merited. Their favor is dimensional. It is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding procures favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. If someone comes to give Pastor Mildred right now or her dear husband 
a, 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 a plot of land or a house or a car. It's easy to think that, oh, because they are great men of God. You find out what was done first. Nothing just happens, you know that. So it's time to make your own happen. In the name of Jesus, the force of the word. This year, settle down. What is not working in my life? Lord, grant me grace. I believe I married a good man, but we are tired of hitting our heads from pillar to post. Lord, there has to be an answer, and the Spirit of God takes you to Scripture. It may take a while, but let that while meet you studying, not complaining. Let that while meet you studying. Lord, I've been in Lagos for 10 years and I've not gotten a job. Someone just came to David's Christian Center in two weeks and he got a job. What am I doing wrong? This is not jealousy or competition. This is, it is you, are, you are provoking yourself to godliness. Let me tell you, until you get angry with some things and get dissatisfied, they will never leave you. Dissatisfaction is a gift. It can push you to a new level. For some of you, you have experienced dimensions of God spiritually, financially, but you are camping around mediocrity. Take that local champion mentality and trust God to push you. The world is your stage. Stop celebrating success too early. I'm better than this and that. Compared to what? Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, he said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and facing the things that are before me, he said, I press. Find out who is pressing. The man who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Make up your mind that this is not the time to start celebrating success to me. Pat yourself at the back, Lord, I thank you for this. For the heights. And we We'll never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you In ministry, in business And we will never settle for less When we know there's more that's found in you Sing it one more time, provoke yourself And we We'll never settle for less. We know there's more than in you. Apostle, but I'm a mighty prophet compared to what? Have you turned Nigeria's problem overnight? What prophets in the Bible who said by this time tomorrow? Thank God for what you have seen, but you are still at the infancy. I am a great teacher compared to what? Paul, who spoke before. Agrippa, before Felix, and he said, you almost converted me. As hardened as they were. Let me tell you this. The spirit of a champion is the spirit of a presser. You never settle. Let those behind you keep clapping for you while you keep shifting and moving. I made a covenant with myself that I would never allow the applause of men to close the doors of new levels for me. Lord, thank you for what you are doing, but there is more. Compared to where you are taking us, we are just a step out of the cave. Keep us humble. That's why pride is a killer. If you are here and you are suffering from the spirit of pride, repent this night and go for a retreat after this conference. People brag over nothing, just little results. I am amazed at the passion of your pastor and their wife in spite of the phenomenal work they are doing across the body, blessing people with their thoughts on family life especially, and yet you keep seeing them press. I was having a discussion with your pastor yesterday, and I was very humbled by his passion, just listening, and I said, this is the spirit of a winner. Can I tell you, when you say they are clapping for me, look at those clapping press. Before you say I'm a champion, look at those clapping. Who are the people clapping? Am I challenging you? Obtain grace. Man of God, go back to the drawing board. Thank you for what you have done, but there is more. Prophetess, prophet, there is still more. Businessman, you've not conquered Lagos yet. Thank God that you have started, but come on. Have you been able to give? and fund a conference without it affecting your finances. If the answer is no, you are not yet there. Thank God for what you have done, but keep pressing. Number three. 
We have to close. Shali kari sapanu se preketi siyata. Pray in the spirit for one minute, please. Randa gaso preketi se libra haskadiyata. Alabarato se preti gebelego siyata. Hallelujah. Number three, very quickly, we're wrapping up now. The third spiritual force that is responsible for helping believers to make spiritual progress is called discipleship. Please write it down. Every apostle was once a disciple. The word apostle there should not be limited to preacher. It just means one who is sent. That means without training, your being sent is only a risk to your destiny. There are many believers who will never submit themselves to be structurally mentored. You see, a disciple is simply a student and a learner. Please look up. I love you with all my heart and I'm standing to share the burden of your pastors this year. Graduate from being a member to being a student. I always say when I'm speaking, you know, I, I tell our people, fans don't have any inheritance. I am a fan of this. That's wonderful. I believe they are well intentioned. But the only people who receive are those who are students. It is from the word disciple that you coin the word discipline, the staying power, the resolve to remain until you become. Jesus called them to be with him first before he would send them. There is no champion who just goes to the ring. You first stay with a coach. Many believers fail in life because they are not structurally mentored. They freelance knowledge here and there. The assignment of the local assembly, the assignment of Pastor Kingsley, Pastor Mildred, according to Jeremiah 3.15, he says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, and that they will feed you. Huh? They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So your pastors are like spiritual chefs. They feed you week in, week out. That means every spirit that fights you from coming to church and then to settle down. Don't come to church and be browsing and be smiling and be doing all of these ones. I mean, you know, if you are smiling for joy but that you are distracted, you are in your own world by yourself while fire is coming from the altar. If you are too big to be disciples, then the throne is not for you. I assure you on that. Many people have made a shipwreck of their lives and their destinies through pride. They will not settle to listen. Jesus, surprisingly, even though he was the word incarnate at age 12, when his contemporaries would probably be running up and down, the Bible says Jesus was at the temple learning under the scribes. The law that he was coming to abolish, he still submitted himself to that system. And for 18 years, we don't hear about Jesus again. The next time we hear about him, he's age 30. And John speaks and says, Behold the Lamb. Jesus did not just succeed because he was the Son of God. He submitted to learning. For someone, God is telling you you are destined for the throne, but not this version of you. You need to settle in church. You need to be properly mentored. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says they continued steadfastly. Acts 2.42, you read it down to 47. Acts 2.42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Is that in your Bible? And in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayer. The next verse, as a result, the Bible says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders were done by the apostles. Let's go to Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 very quickly the bible says paul haven't passed through the upper coast that he came and he found certain disciples Acts 19 from verse 1 it's just 1 to 4 but let's just look at verse 1 he found certain disciples not certain members they were saved but they were disciples now notice the person who discipled them was limited himself. So they were taught after the limitation of that disciple. They were saved, but they were not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. 
Only God knows what more you need to learn. Thank God for what you know. But what more you need to learn. And Paul asked them, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe verse 2? And they said, we've not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. Paul was surprised. Wow. Unto what baptism then were you baptized? He asked them. And they said, the baptism of John. They were disciples but limited. That's the reason why you should salute your, your pastors for being fast to be open to receive the diversities that are in the body of Christ. Because they do not want this to become your state. And Paul now began to explain to them that the baptism of John was the baptism of repentance. Right? That they should believe on who should come. And when he had now spoken to them, the Bible says that they were baptized in the name of Jesus and he laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues, they prophesied and the Bible says the number of them was twelve. Twelve of them. Make up your mind that this is not the year you will give excuses for coming to church. No. As a matured believer, if you have to be coerced to come to the house of God, I sincerely, respectfully believe you are not serious. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And when you come to church, from the opening prayer to the grace, you are attentive. Lord, what do you have for me today? My children are at the mercy of this revelation that is coming. And as the word is coming, you are attentive. The Bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something. Discipleship. Submit yourself to learning. Buy books. Submit yourself to knowledge. And that also extends to people in business. Find someone who is clearly ahead of you and unashamedly submit to learn. Find someone who is clearly, if you are not sure, don't go there. You need that gap, that potential difference has to be there for you to receive. Colleague mentality is why every, many people remain grounded. I'm not sure if I should receive this or not. But when the difference is clear in results, you will listen attentively. Learn from all men, but find those with potent results and follow. The Bible calls them the them who through faith and patience have obtained the results, have obtained the promises. Apostle, I'm doing business, but it looks like this, my business is not working well in Lagos. There has to be somebody born again and filled with the Holy Spirit in that area. Submit yourself to learning. There is something I do not know. It is amazing how humility can buy you something in one day that may take many people 10 years. The person may not tell you the answer you are looking for. You only say, sit down, let me give you a story. My journey started from 1971. That's your revelation there. It's your responsibility to fish out the one he is telling you stories. They kept me under a bridge and I remember that night. I cried unto the Lord. I said, mercy. Aha, uh -huh, you are learning now. You are writing all the keys. You see, let me tell you something. Masters are so professional. Sometimes when you watch them, you don't see the steps. You will have to trust God for grace. Okay, this is what this person has said. And then you go and do likewise. And you come back with results that looks like you held a charm. There is no result that cannot be reproduced. If Jesus' result was reproduced, there is no result that cannot be reproduced. It is either ignorance or pride. May you reproduce fearful results in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The last key. Has God spoken to someone tonight? Hmm. Are you ready? The last key that helps people to make spiritual progress in this kingdom is service. And I'll stop here. Service. Service. And there are two dimensions to this service. Number one, service in the house of God. And number two, the service of a witness. Don't forget what I taught you tonight. The forces and the keys that guide us to make spiritual progress. Number one, the ministry of prayer. Number two, the ministry of the word. Number three, discipleship. Number four, service. There are certain levels of growth you cannot attain 
until and unless you are actively in service. There are times you go to use a restroom and they put a big, um, uh, what they call that thing, there's like a sign there, out of service. That means don't bother coming here. It is not working. Some of us are carrying this all around our lives. Out of service, both to God and to men. And so everybody avoids you the same way we avoid that restroom. And you are wondering, come to me, but there's something in you saying, out of service. I am not a worker in the house of God. I am not a witness revealing Christ. What are you then? But I've seen certain filling stations that have queues. And you see beautiful cars queuing there. You are wondering, don't these people have anything else to do? They are patient because those stations are so in service. Sometimes late into the night, people still wait. May you be like that. In the name of Jesus Christ, that nations will come to seek the hand of God upon you. And let me tell you, there are many of you, people will inconvenience themselves with joy and say, we have this hand and the hand of God is upon on you. We cannot but look to your direction. I'm prophesying to someone in the name of my God and the one who lives men. Everybody who needs to find you and to be a blessing through your life and to bless you through their life. In Jesus name may your service attract them to you. Please sit down. Please sit down. There are many of you who have been in this ministry for a very long time. Exodus 23-25 is a deep mystery that God taught me and I've had the privilege and the honor of teaching our workers. If you serve God just because the pastor and his wife are still your tribesmen or you are served because they know you and there's no way you can run away. You can't lie that you are working, you are staying in their house or some kind of flimsy excuse. You must serve God by revelation. It says, and ye shall serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless. It's a covenant. This is called the covenant of service. You shall serve the Lord, and he shall bless. Service does not mean coming to church. Service means making activities in the house of God work. So just because you came, you are a congregant, respectfully speaking. Those who are serving are those who made sure this pulpit was in place. That they came early in the morning making sure that everything is in place. Can I tell you, God rewards service. My God, I don't know which one, my own, my God rewards service. I'm telling you this. And there are some of you, it looks like you have served for a long time. I said it in the mainland yesterday, watch out the reward that is coming. There is a name that God is called. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, that he that cometh unto God must believe that he exists and then that he is the rewarder. When God comes to you, he gives you more than a salary. He can give, he can give you a man's prayer point as a gift. He can carry the whole of a man's destiny and literally give it to you. It pays to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. Say service. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Very quickly. It says, I'd rather be... For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Who is speaking here? King David. Please do not join people who think that the house of God is just a place that turns people to slaves. Oh, but you are walking, keep doing that. You will never get a husband the way you are all in that. What God are you talking about now? People feel stupid for being committed in church and we open up ourselves to maybe well-meaning but ignorant people who bring in philosophies and deflate your passion. If you have been in this house for a while and you've not served, obtained grace from God, you are missing out on something. There is a level of growth. There are people whose prayer lives became strong because of their departmental prayers. There are those who even discovered their call through service. They never knew they were called. Stephen thought he was in the welfare department. Yet there was a mighty, mighty man of God in him. 
There are things you will never find until you serve. In the place of service, you learn accountability. You learn organization. It's not just spirituality. In the place of service, you will meet with strategic people. There are those who found their spouses in the place of service. You were cleaning a chair. You did not know that you were cleaning nonsense out of your destiny because it was your husband or your wife that was going to sit on it. Now, that is, hey, hey hold on. That is not the reason why you should serve. However, it can be a reason as you serve. There are people who found strategic destiny helpers while serving. They were so early cleaning the church and God directed a billionaire to come. Where is your pastor? He says, not around. He said, who are you? Well, I'm this and that and that. Why are you? You look like you're a nice person walking. Do you have a job? No, sir. How many years? Ten years. No job? Can you become the African director of this company? And it's as if you want to scam you. You want to run away. And he said, no, no. Is what the blessing of the Lord can do. I know it sounds funny, but there are people who have what I'm telling you as a testimony. May you be the next one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this. Years ago, I went to preach in Mubi, and the man who was driving me, they had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for a long time. Very sincere, nice man. And he was driving me. Usually I pray for the people who are within close proximity I make sure I speak over them and while he was driving me I started hearing the cry of babies I didn't know I didn't know the man from anywhere I said what is this and later I got to find out and I told him you have driven me except this car did not move that the, an end comes to this demonic thing whatever seat and that was the end of it Don't downplay what God can do through service. Service in the house of God, and then all of us should be in service as witnesses. Acts chapter 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. And with great power gave witness of the apostles of the resurrection. And great grace was upon them. With great power they gave witness. A witness is a validator. That means your assignment is to make Jesus known. We call it in our ministry, Jesus reveals and Jesus glorified. That that is the assignment. You are not in service if Jesus is not being revealed to your life. Just because money is being revealed through your life does not mean you are in service. Except if that money reveals Jesus. Everything must end up revealing Jesus and glorifying Him. Otherwise, you are not in service. Let me show you one last scripture. Have I wasted your time tonight? Micah chapter 3 from verse 16 to 18. Malachi, my apologies, Malachi chapter 3. Please give it to us from verse 16. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Malachi 3. It says, And they that feared the Lord, and the Lord hearkened, and all of that, verse, verse, um, verse 17 now. We are reading to 18. And they shall be mine, said the Lord, in that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that. Not just his own son. There is exemption in service. That when certain plagues are coming upon men, the son that serves, there are many sons, but the one that serves, I will spare them. Now verse 18. Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served God and him that served not. That means there are things God does in the life of a man that you say we are all Christians. But what is the difference? One is in service. One is out of service. I choose to be in service. I choose to be in service. 
more than the word servant is not supposed to be an insult if you understand what it means. A servant is not a slave. A servant is one who willfully has submitted himself to serve the king. And this God that we serve is benevolent. You can serve your way to favor. You can serve your way to breakthrough. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. The next prophet was supposed to come out of the sons of the prophets. But he served his way into a double portion of that anointing. If God has given you the privilege to serve in this house, please reject complaining. Apostle, you don't know the problems I have. It's not only you. Every church, everyone, including our ministry, has it. There are things that are common to men. It should be too small a reason for you to keep com complaining and grumbling. I choose not to be offended this year. I make up my mind that I will serve. They may step on my toes. I may sincerely step on the toes of others. But all be it the truth is that we desire that Jesus be revealed. That Jesus be glorified. And you will see God lifting you. You will begin to flourish like the palm tree and like that cedar that is in Lebanon. There is no going down for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray and receive a prophetic word? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for sparing me the time. I'm going to give us two prayer points. Then I speak over our lives and we're done. Please, I'd like you to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I believe that a cloud is about to shift over someone's life right now. Just two prayer points. These four forces, the force of prayer, the force of the word, discipleship and service, obtain grace to walk in them. You want to make maximum spiritual progress. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Are there people of prayer? Everywhere, inside, outside, following online, I'd like you to begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I obtain grace to pray. My prayer life, you just back to life. Let the fire upon my prayer altar come alive. Come alive again. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. I submit myself to the word of God. I submit to the authority of the word more than science, more than logic, more than philosophy. The word of God becomes the framing point of my perception. Obtain grace to submit yourself to discipleship. Submit yourself beyond being a member of David's Christian Center. Submit yourself. Lord, I will learn. Thank you for Pastor Mildred. Thank you for her dear husband, Pastor Kingsley. I submit in the name of Jesus. I take them as pastors you have given me. I submit to wisdom. I submit to learning. I submit to rebuke. I submit to instructions. Now pray for the grace to serve. Especially they that serve in this house. For some of you it's a fresh call to serve. To serve the Lord sincerely. Thou shalt serve the Lord and he shall bless your bread and your water. Take sickness far from you. You are a leader in this church. I want you to begin to pray. A renewed commitment to serve with my resources, to serve with my heart, to serve with my gifts and my talent. Void of offense, void of dishonor, to serve. To serve. 
as a husband the grace to serve your family with diligence and responsibility as a wife and a mother the grace to serve your husband to serve your children as a leader the grace to serve not to lord over Hallelujah. 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 I want to speak over your life. When Moses came and met Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may go and serve me. The purpose of going is to serve. If you are not going to serve, progress and motion is useless. Let my people go, not just to prove that I am God. So the more you make progress in life, it is because you have told God, I'm ready to serve. The moment you sign up for service, you are ready for advancement. Fearful advancement. No wonder the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that even though he was God in every way, he considered it not robbery to be God, but for the purpose of service, that he humbled himself, he became a man, then he humbled himself in obedience, and he died, even the death on the cross. Wherefore, because service always comes with lifting, wherefore God had so highly exalted him, the Bible says, and had given him a name, an office, that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, that Jesus is Lord. I want to stand in faith with Pastor Kingsley and his dear wife and to speak over your life. The prophetic is very powerful. Don't get used to people making nonsense out of it. The prophetic can redefine and shift climates in your life. Hallelujah. Every word that you have received and every word prophetic decree that will be coming from this altar in the course of this year. Can you have a renewed understanding about it? Sometimes it may be casual, but you can receive it. Lord, this is you speaking to me. We are made by prophecy. Ezra chapter 6, I think verse 14. It says, and they, prof they prosper through the prophesying. The prophesying of Zechariah the prophet. It says, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of God. God commanded it. While they were building, prophets were prophesying. It has been commanded that it's your year of flourishing. That is God's command. But now it must be prophesied upon you. It says they were building, but they prospered through the prophesying. And by a prophet, it says, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who has shown us mercy and help. David's Christian Center, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Every door that has refused to open over your life and destiny, we command it open now. 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 Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Let me declare favor on someone. A stranger you did not know, they will be directed by my God to surprise you this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a master. We have toiled all night. For someone you kept toiling all through 2022. I bless grace on your head. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Make progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you through rebellion and disobedience like Samson, you have lost your glory. But is there hope for a tree? 
the Bible says there is hope for a tree. Maybe you despise the prophets God put over you. Maybe you despise instructions. But I stand as a voice of mercy tonight and I declare, get back to the place of honor. The prodigal son, through pride and rebellion, he was now degraded to a point where he was feeding with swine. The Bible let us into his contemplation and he said, How many hired servants has my father? And I'm here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And while the father saw him afar off, he hugged him, kissed him, restored the signet ring, a sign of honor, put a robe upon him. I don't know what you lost through this honor. There was a grace God was blanketing this ministry with. Yet he did not speak in your life because you despised your prophets. In the name of Jesus, may the God of all grace restore, 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 restore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. For someone who has been crying, let me speak to you. Weep not. It is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm wrapping up. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Every attack on your prayer life that has made your prayer life become zero, fasting zero, commitment for spiritual things. There were some of you, you were people who loved God but right now your life has gone haywire, bad friends, bad associations, and you say it does not matter. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. Be delivered now. The grace to pray, the spirit of prayer and supplication, I release upon your life now. The spirit of revelation, According to Ephesians 1, from verse 15 to 20, may that grace come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for your finances? Please don't say it does not matter. It is not lack of wisdom. It is, it is completely lack of wisdom to say it does not matter. Don't join people who downplay the role that finances has to play in your life. Most people have compromised because of this finance thing. Are we together? There are people who love God walking in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Satan tried every other means and they did not fall. But he used this money thing and they fell like a pack of cards. It's not enough to say, don't do this, don't go there. We must be able to speak over your life. I hope you know that there is a dimension of prosperity that comes through prophecy. Yes, sir. It's not a license for laziness. Be valuable. Turn your value to products and services. Serve it to a targeted consumer base. But at the back of your mind, remember that there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. The prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, everything that should have entered your heart but was hijacked by demonic forces, I stand by the God of heaven. Please hear me. Between now and the end of January, I stand by the God who called me. May my God surprise you. Now and January, ending January, may my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the sound of celebration and the sound of rejoicing not end in this church this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Now listen to me everyone, please let me have your attention. There are people here who need Jesus. You need Jesus now. You need Jesus fast. Please no movement. Let's just stand to honor what...
the call that I'm about to make. You see, when I started ministry, we were told and trained to make altar calls so that we can depopulate hell and you know and all of that. But as I have grown in the things of God, God has poured within me the compassion of Jesus over people. When I make altar calls, it's not a ritual to just show that a man of God is balanced and serious. The issue of Jesus Christ is a serious issue. This is beyond a preacher's issue. This is beyond a conference issue. In every service that was ordained by God, there must be people sent there by God who would have an opportunity to encounter the Son of the Living God. He says, and this is the record that God has given us eternal life. He says, and this life is in His Son, so that who still has the Son had this life. You can receive healing, but without salvation you did not receive much. You can even receive a prophetic word like you just did, but without the knowing salvation and encounter with the God of the Bible, not much can be done. Satan has legitimate access to any life that has not been washed by the blood. You may be here, outside, and for those watching by way of television or watching online, let tonight be your night. I'm standing here in faith with the angels over this house, and I want to make an altar call. An altar call is not like coming to a funeral where people drag themselves in shame and come and stand before. No, it is an honorable call for those who are courageous enough to wave Satan goodbye and say, I have found Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. And perhaps there are others who at one time you've given your life to Jesus, but sincerely whilst you are here, you know that things have gone haywire. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five amount of time. I want you to boldly and unashamedly come to the front here and come and stand in front. Don't, don't wait for someone to be the first. I begin my counting. Leave your seat and come and stand here. Come to Jesus. One. Two. If you are coming, run. Those coming from outside, allow them to come. David's Christian Center is the best you can do for them. Come. 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 Hallelujah. Come. The first law of flourishing is that you must be planted. The first law of flourishing is that you must be planted. It is they that are planted, not they that are around. Being around is not the same as being planted. Are we still celebrating Jesus? Come. Can you just dress them so they don't inconvenience the woman of God? Come. You can scatter them. There's still a little space there. God bless you. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Come you don't have to kneel for space. Just stand. Hallelujah. Please look at me, those of you in front. I salute you sincerely for the courage to come and make this noble decision. This is the noblest, the wisest way to start your year. You see, more than coming to stand in front of God's people, you must be determined. The Bible says, For if thou shalt confess with thy heart the Lord Jesus, believing that God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. For it is with the heart that we make confessions unto righteousness, the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you for making this noble decision, and for those who are making it online, Jesus is right there with you. Please follow suit as I lead them to pray. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. Say this after me, please. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare 
that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you and we honor you for these ones you have so graciously convicted. Thank you for the ministry of your spirit, the ministry of your word. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You have brought them. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that will be grounded and established in righteousness. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. You are saved in Jesus' matchless name, I pray. Amen and amen. Now, please look at me, just an instruction. I request that you move to my right, which will be your left. There are counselors waving their hands. They'll just lead you and have a quick information about you. Just um, a few minutes and then you'll be back.